Hey, it's Norm from Tessa.com. Well, Halloween is right around the corner and you might see some awesome makeup, some masks on the streets, but we're down here in LA where there's a company called Immortal Mask. I'm with George here, one of the owners of Immortal Mask. You guys make a really high quality creature mask. We do, we make silicone masks. Uh, and what silicone does is it affords for a realistic look that looks like flesh and movement that you won't get out of your standard Halloween uh, latex mask. Right, so if I go into a Halloween superstore, for yeah. example, I see like a zombie mask or something, that's foam latex, we've seen that. And, sure. And, that stuff has a certain amount of detail. Sure. It doesn't maybe have the texture or the flexibility of silicone? Well, yeah, yeah, and I grew up on those masks. I was a fan of those masks, so that's really what kind of prompted even what we're doing these days. But uh, as you know, technology progresses, as new materials become available, and, uh, and with a little experience that we have from the, the, uh, the Hollywood effects industry, we kind of threw that into an emerging technology, and, and that was silicone. And silicone's been used in the effects industry for a long time, but hasn't really seen its way to a commercial market yet, and so we kind of found something that we can do where we could bring the monsters that we make or the monsters that we grew up with, right, available to anybody. And right. so, uh, and so, yeah, they're a little bit high end. You won't really see these in Party City. You won't really see these in, you know, in, in, a, in Spirit Shop, but you can order these directly from us online. And, uh, and, and we can custom make these any way you want to and you know, from our catalog or, or if you want to, we can do a custom sculpture and, and, you know, and make it a, a, you know, exact mass that you want. And where you might see these actually are like haunted houses, those yes. haunts, those really big installations. I know it's yes. really popular, like people build that giant facilities and instead of every day having to put a zombie makeup on someone, yeah. they get a mask from a company like you yep. and then it looks realistic or maybe in a movie production. You guys have also We, we do, that. actually we do quite a few for, uh, for, for local productions, music videos, uh, feature films, uh, Fire City. The, that's you know the guys from ADI did that. They're going to you'll see a couple of our guys in that movie too. Um, yeah, and, and, and the haunted attraction industry has actually been really good to us. And, and I mean that's great because like I said, we're Halloween kids. I grew up a Halloween kid. I wanted the best costume when I was a kid. And, and uh, the haunts are becoming huge. I mean they were already big, but they are big now. Uh, haunted attractions, theme parks, right? Uh, capitalizing on Halloween and, and everyone's love for horror and Halloween and. It's funny because what, what we provide for them, well, we come from a makeup effects background. So you know, we're, we're, we employ and, and, and we come from the makeup effects industry and we offer something that kind of you know, puts us out of business. But it makes sense when it comes to, you know, to the haunted attraction. See, this would be like a six hour full overhead application. You know, the, to do this ma this mask would be huge, right? right for a movie, and so yeah. you're having to put your your actor, your character, in, you know, in a chair for six hours, and have one makeup artist work on this person for six hours, and at the end of the night, they'd have to remove the thing and probably just throw it away. And what this allows for is constant reuse. It's uh, oh. it's pliable, it's stretchy, but it's really resistant, doesn't tear. And, and silicone yeah, they, looks so lifelike. Yeah, it has that same property, it the stretchy like, properties of the human skin. That and just the way it paints too. You, the great thing about silicone is that so many, so many of its own properties just really lend for the, the realism. I mean, silicone's property by nature is nothing sticks to silicone but silicone. So you have to paint it in a silicone-based paint system, which has these great opacities, and you build up these layers, and you eventually get these great skin tones. You talk a lot about technique and stuff, and you've invited mm -hmm. us here today to actually walk into your workshop yeah. and see how these masks are made. I'm yeah. so excited. Yeah. So let's go into the workshop. All right, let's take a look. All right, George, the first step to creating a mask is sculpting. Yes. Right, and we've uh, experienced with Frank Capolito, who you work yeah. with, in terms of sculpting on top of like a, a life cast. Sure. Of who, who the mask is made for. Sure, yeah. When you're making a mask that anyone can wear, where does that begin? Well, it starts with something called the reduced core, right? And this is the trick. And this is the key to any silicone mask company, um, is designing a core, an armature base, right, that is going to apply to you, me, anybody who wears it. So we call it one size fits most, which means that we have a pretty nice margin of what we can actually do to, to, to fit everybody else. But what's really important is how the mask is going to move on you. And by doing that, we actually have to take this, right, and we have to take the human form and then we reduce it. We actually shave it down and make it smaller. So it stretches out and then snaps back to your face. Kind of like putting a sock on your foot, right? Same idea. The mask is eventually gonna have to snap back on your face so that your own facial mechanics can operate it. Oh, so, it's a little tighter, but then it tight, contacts your exactly, skin. Exactly, and it's supposed to be. So then we do go in and we, in the sculptural form, we exaggerate features, right? So when your face goes into it, these still keep their forms, right? Now this is one of our new ones, this is a half mask. Generally our masks are sculpted all the way down to here. But we just started a new product line, which we're having fun with, right? It's our half mask. We're sculpting them all the way to here. 
and they work really fun for like with character like type things like like human elements mm. this guy's called the creep and he's going to be just kind of our creepy guy we envision him with as a clown and we have snaps made for devil horns this wow. one's going to be a nice fun one so who sculpts these for you guys about 55 to 60 percent of our sculptures are done by my partner andrew freeman He's, he's an amazing sculptor. I mean, he sculpts at light speed and he, he gets the company. But the cool thing is that you know, we're friends with so many awesome people in the industry that we were able, able to pull from um, a talent pool that isn't available anywhere else in the world. I mean, we, we hire Hollywood effects artists, right, to, to, to work with us, whether it be Frank or if we hire Jordi Shell to sculpt, sculpt our alien, or Mikey Rotella comes in as a sculpture for us for a, a one-off, wow. or I've got um, you know Bill Basso who comes in and does zombie arms for us. So it's like it's fun for them at times, you know. I, we get hit up constantly. So when am I going to sculpt a mask for you? When am I going to sculpt a mask for you? <laughs> and honestly, I hope somewhere down the line. I'm able to grab all of my friends out there in the effects awesome. industry and have them sculpt the mask for us. Now, in terms of the functional aspect of the sculpture, sure. what's the expression? Like, what are the things that the sculpt well, is designed for? There's certain things that are gonna work with a silicone mask and certain things that aren't gonna work. In other words, um, you aren't gonna be able to make it really smile, okay? So the muscles that it takes to take, take something and pull up this way, because a silicone mask goes over your face and the cool thing about it is you don't have to glue anything in, right? There are some drawbacks to that too. And, and, and gluing in in thin areas will, will do a, 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 an expression. So what we do is we go and sculpt the expression in. So we give them some arches in the brows and we give them a slight smile here. So when you actually do utilize the movements of the mask, the up and down moments, right? The movements of the mask, right? You'll see things heighten. Um, you'll get great eyebrow movement in this. You'll get great movement all the way around. You'll go like this and everything around here will move. But you won't be able to actuate a smile, so we sculpt that in. Very cool. So it's sculpted and then it gets molded. It does. And it goes out to, uh, to well, it goes out to Frank. Frank, and, okay. Yeah, yeah, and Frank, Frank is our, our primary mold maker. Um, we've known each other for a long time. We've worked together on a couple of films in the past. Uh, when this company got up and rolling, it was a pleasure to bring Frank in. He's, he's just amazing, and he understands exactly what we do. Our communication level with the mold maker is extremely important. It really is, because after the sculpture, the most important thing that we can possibly have is those molds. Those molds represent my business from then on. They have to be strong, they have to hold up, and they have to capture the detail. And so I have to go to somebody who's experienced in that, and Frank's one of the best I know. So let's take a look at those molds and how you actually cast the silicone in those molds. You got it. All right, so we're in the mold prep area and the yes. casting area right now. You have a yep. ton of these molds yeah. that Frankie Polito made for you. Yep. And this is where like the skin gets made. This is where it starts. When a mold comes back from Frank, uh, it's gonna come here. We open it, we inspect it, and kind of take a look at the mold and go, okay, what do we see in this in this mold that either is gonna be, you know, something that, an issue that we want to address, um, you know, because he's capturing the detail and building this great mold. Generally, there's never really a problem because Frank takes care of it in advance. He'll figure out how to do things like make plugs to go into the mold for, for a, a horn area, right? Mm, yeah. And so we don't really have that problem. So we come back and then we take the mold and what we'll do is we'll drill bleeder holes. What we do is we look for the high points on, the, on, a, on a mask too. Collarbone areas, lips, things like that. And we'll drill bleeder holes specifically in those areas. And then we just drill generic bleeder holes. And that, that does for us is that tracks our fill because we gravity pour our mask. Now some companies, that they do is they injection mold, right? And what that means is they're taking a mask and they're flipping it upside down. They have a spout that goes all the way through the paws of, down to the head. The pressure fills that up. Exactly. The only thing with that is, um, is you get a silicone waste. In other words, everything in that tube that has to go from the head all the way down past the shoulders, right, is going to be silicone. It's a tube of silicone. And it's kind of a lot of it a waste. People like to avoid that because, well, they don't have to patch it off. They don't cut it off. But our patches and our seamers, as I'll show you in a little bit, are, are pretty good. So we actually put a pore spout in the top of the mask and we gravity pour these masks. So we can track where it, where it is by bleeders. And while it's filling, all we do is when it, when it starts to bleed out, we let it bleed out for a minute, get the air out of it. And then we hit it with clean clay and then we stop that and it goes until it, all, it fills up all the way. And then that gets you no know, air bubbles or anything like that. Yep, yep. So cool. after that, after the mold's ready to go, right, what we do is we take the positive, right? So in this case, I'll show you. Our positives all get a cool little thing that so far we're the only ones that do. And this is a full power mesh hood. We employ a full-time seamstress to make us hoods, gloves, and what we do is we put four-way power stretch power mesh into these masks and we encapsulate the whole thing in it. It adds not only extra protection, because while these masks are nice and, you know, and sturdy, they're not bulletproof. And the right. thing about silicone is when silicone gets a hole, right, it's prone to tearing. So the mesh actually protects it from doing that. What it also does is some other cool things. Because it's actually like a spandexy material, right, it 
is always snapping back to the positive. And if you've noticed, some of our masks, right, are built way out off the face. Big like noses and chins. Like that. And well, we're using a really heavy and soft material, and that's silica. So it would tendency, when it builds farther away, is to want to sag and move down like this. The power mesh takes that and goes, brings it right back to the face. Wow. So these things allow us to do so many cool things besides adding that extra area of protection. It allows us to go thinner in some areas, right? Because if we didn't have it, they'd have to be, the, the whole clay would have to be down, laid down equally, right? So you'd start down with like maybe, let's say, a quarter inch of clay and then you'd build your sculpture. We don't have to do that, right? We can sculpt thinner in areas that we know we want to have maximum movement at because the power mesh protects us in that area. So this is really the structure of it the is. mask. It is. And it's just a trick. I mean, there really isn't, we didn't invent this, you know? We've been using this in the effects industry for years. Foam latex cowls, creature suits, things like that. Because when you get to set, right, and you put, you're going to put your monster cowl on, the last thing in the world you want to do is rip when it goes the on. Eye, the eye holes rip. Oh, the yeah. I mean, holes 80s rip. are pounding on your, your, your door. They want to know why the creature's not on set. And it's because you didn't put some protect, protection in that. And so power mesh is something that's been used in the effects industry for years. So when we started a mask company, we just took a lot of the same tricks that we looked in that industry and applied it to what we do. All right, so silicone poured in, yep. comes at the top, yep. you pop the mold open, yep. and then it gets cleaned up. Yep, it goes to seaming and patching. That's, That's the next step. That's the next line of defense. All right, let's head over there. All right. So this is it. This is the silicone mask as it comes out of the mold. It is. So when it gets popped out, it comes over to our seaming and our patching division. And, uh, and this is where they do all the cleanup on the mask. Mm. This is where it's going to get into its final state before it goes into paint. So you see pore holes right there, right there, sure. the extra silicone. Yep, and you see the extra power mesh that comes out through here. Yep. So one of the first things that happen is that you take the mask off, right? We make sure that everything's okay under the mask as well as outside the mask, right? And then what we do is we'll probably try the mask on first real quick just to see if we're, we're, we're right in all the fitting and everything. So then we go back and we start trimming off all the power mesh and we start trimming off the flashing. Now flashing here is where the division wall comes from the mold, right? So you're going to have silicone that's trapped inside. This is where the seam is going to be. And what we want to do is we want to make it so we have a nice, clean seam. So you can't tell that there's any difference. This is all one uniform mask. In the meantime, there'll be other little blemishes, possibly, or bleeder hole areas, right, that, that need to be filled. And so all those things, like an air bubble right here on the, on, on the, uh, on the collarbone, that gets filled in and gets texturized. And the way that we do that is, so when we cast these masks, right, what we do is we pre-tint the B-side of the mask. It's an A and B mix of silicone. So we pre-tint the B-side, right? And then what we do is we take a cup of that same tinted B-side, and we take it, we put it away, and put it in a refrigerator, we cover it, and that's gonna represent the patch afterwards. So that means it stays the exact same color as the mask it was cast in. Right. So literally, we write down on the cup which mask that is, and it goes in there, and that's what we're gonna use for our patch. What we do is we catalyze small amounts of silicone, and then we mix it with a silicate filler, right, called Cabasil. And Cabasil goes, goes and gives us a little bit of a nice thicker, almost like, kind of like a frosting-like consistency. And then our skilled techs all back here, they go back in, they cut the areas they need to, and they go back and they patch. And the cool thing, the really cool thing about something they can do, right, is that they can actually completely rebuild areas and patch. So we've done what we call our conversions, where we go, cool, I want this to look like the Grinch, right? And we'll cut the whole face off, and they'll go back and they'll slowly build the whole area back up and give it a new nose. And they can actually re-sculpt in silicone. And because it's the same silicone, mm -hmm. same batch, yep. it's gonna stick, silicone yep. sticks to silicone, yep. and it's as if it was one piece. Yep, and it's curing. This thing is in a constant state of cure for about 72 hours after we demold it, right? It's still curing all the way through. I mean, it's nice and it's a great piece of rubber already right now, but it's still curing. And so the great thing about that is that the patch, right, that goes into it becomes integral. And then the paint system that we paint it with becomes integral as well. It's all material science. You need to find it some is. silicone that's gonna set in the right amount of time to get out of the mold yep. so you can make new ones. Yep but also have enough work time yes. so you can still patch it. Yes. And, and then be in a good solid state yep. so you can paint it. Wow. We're artisans, we're chemists, we're uh, still a little bit of physics in here. Um, there's a lot of properties of science that has to go into all of this. That's awesome. So yeah. when this is done, what does it look like after well, all the patching's been I'll done? show you. This is our berserker. And so when it's done, it's nice and clean like this. Where the seam lines are nice and taken care of. And that is a finished patch mask. And the next step will be going to paint. Let's head over to the paint department. Let's do it. Now there's some real artistry that goes in this. Yes. And I was really surprised when I walked in here that you have actually people painting individual ones. Oh yeah, oh yeah. Everything uh, is hand painted. Yep. Every one of our masks is actually custom ordered and custom painted, which means that we give our client base the opportunity to go ahead and decide how they want to look. 
And when we do a new mask, what we do is we come up with about three or four paint schemes that we think is cool. But every once in a while, you know, a customer throws something at us that that's, that's, turns out to be really cool. And so we give them the opportunity to go ahead and use our mask as a blank canvas and go, I want it purple, or I want it to have extra veining, or I want blood to come out of the mouth. And, uh, and then we send over our painters, our highly skilled painters, and they jump right into it. These guys are good. They're really good. They've really got silicone painting down. And, uh, and this is Johnny right here, and he's painting one of uh, a mask. Actually, he sculpted. This is our bitten zombie mask, and you'll kind of notice an area here that's, that's missing. When Johnny's done painting it, uh, the last, real last step is finishing for some of our masks. And uh, what they'll do is they're going to cast up dental acrylic teeth, kind of like dentures, and they're going to adhere them in there. Yeah, so the final thing, you have dentures, you have hair on yeah, some Yeah, and some of our masks. Some of our masks, straight yeah. out of the mold, they're, they're ready to go and paint, and then that's it. And some of them, you know, they get horns on them, or we punch hair into it and whatnot. But really, it starts with what these guys do. And, uh, and you can see Johnny has references to, to anatomy, to you know whatever he needs at times to, to kind of add a little extra. And we, we pull from nature all the time. We're pulling from pictures of, of animals and insects and sometimes crime scenes and mm -hmm. you know cadaver photos just to get the most realistic uh, paint schemes that we can do. And uh, they go and they paint in what's called psycho paint. And psycho paint is a silicone based paint system. They go and mix primary colors until they get them to whatever they need specific layer levels to be. And then they go ahead and they start the process of painting. And this is a multiple layer process. We usually give our painters about three or four masks lined up and they'll take them a look at them and go, what color based systems am I gonna use? And they'll find out that a couple of them in their queue, right, have the exact same, like they're gonna use part of that same palette. So let's say a purple or a red, right? A spattering technique. And so Johnny will line up a couple of those masks in a row and he'll line up the one he's primarily working on and he'll give it each one their coats that they need. And then they'll go back and as he gets closer and closer to finishing, each mask has a specific little nuance, whether it be a, a clown, right? Or this one has dry blood or this one's gonna have fresh blood. And it's just all part of the process and all part of whatever our customer specific need is. Yeah, so it's not assembly line at all, but you're maximizing efficiencies based on the yeah. experience with special sure. effects. Sure. I mean, the thing about doing these masks in general is that, like, uh, you know, latex mask companies, that they, they can assemble, they can have them manufactured outside of the country or even inside the country. These are all artisan based. So when you're buying our mask, you're buying something that's passing through, as you've seen through the shop, uh, the hands of the skilled artists, all the way down to our painters. Your wow. individual works of art. Yep, they individual are. Individual works of art. Yeah. Well, let's take a look at one of these final works of art. Great. I'd love to see the final product. Let's do it. So George, the big thing I'm getting away, the big takeaway is uh -huh. that you guys really love what you do. Yes. And it's all about the artistry. Yes. Uh, your clients are people who are like cosplayers yes. who want to, you know, maybe build armor on top of their mask, yes. or maybe even people who want to collect them. Yep. And you work with them closely. Yes. Customers, very, right? Yeah, very closely. We're, uh, we, we do. Uh, honestly, our web store was just introduced this year. Uh, up until then, our client base and our, our ordering process was strictly by the phone, which I still encourage our customers to do. And we give a nice detailed note area on our website, so if you do order the, over the internet, you can go ahead and dictate. But I love working with our clients. Um, it's a personal thing all the way through, and, and it really is because it goes from our hands to their hands, and they're the ones realizing it after us. So I'm really curious now, how do these masks feel, and what do they look like? when someone's wearing them. Well, we'll have to put one on you, I think. I would love to do that. Is okay. there one ready we can put uh, there, on? There is, right here, actually. All right. So this is our hybrid mask, and it's really kind of cool. And uh, it has this, we did a, a mid-range werewolf originally, and we found out that when we did it, it had some great like uh, feline characteristics as well. So like back in the whole custom paint thing, we're like, why don't we paint one like a cheetah? I thought it'd be kind of cool, very Dr. Violet Moreau. Keep your hands on the cheeks and pull down and forward. And there you go, your mask is basically like a champ, look at that. And then all you do after that, you take little parts of the mask, right? And you just kind of adjust it forward like this on your eyes. Then you take the mouth, right? And you kind of adjust it so that it fits right down to your lip. You'll find the, the, find the area for your lip to fit into. All right. And there you are. Now go ahead and talk to the camera. Wow. I don't know if you can hear me, but this is comfortable. Yeah. I can breathe out of it. Yeah. I probably need my glasses. Yeah. <laughs> Turn around, get this, pull the bib like this. And you now are a cat man. Catman, there you go, for Halloween this year. Thank you so much, George. You're welcome, Norman. This has been so much fun. Where can people find out more about Immortal Mass? Uh, www.immortalmass.com or check us out at uh, on Instagram, Immortal Mass, or check us out on our Facebook page, which we really update. We're, we're really into social media. It's a great place for our client base to interact with us and to show off new product. I sneak peek things on Instagram, so if you want to see things a little bit quicker, go to my Instagram page. And then if you want to order them, just call us or go to our website. And I'm Norm from Tested or Catman. We'll see you next time. Bye. Bye.